Hey y'all, thanks for joining me. I got some things in my heart that I just want to share. Uh, this video is geared more for uh, a message for addicts in the beginning. Um, and then I want to share a situation that took place in my life and how it affected me briefly. And then I just want to share some scripture with you guys and, and let Holy Spirit touch your hearts and, and do what He will with that. Um, so let's get started. Uh, if you or anybody you know struggles with addiction, uh, alcoholism, anything like that, um, if you're not in the program, I just want to say uh, Jesus can set you free. Uh, I was an addict for eight years, give or take. Uh, I was a junkie. Uh, meth and heroin were my drugs of choice. I did everything though. Um, then I met Jesus and he, he set me free. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, so it's possible and I want to encourage you that you can find hope and you can find freedom uh, and the way of finding that is through Jesus through truth if you are in the program I want to touch on three steps out of the 12 steps um, that are the most vital and that are the ones that are going to affect your recovery now the word recovery to me um, is a great word I get it but you cannot have recovery apart from transformation. See, if you're in recovery, apart from truth, Jesus, and transformation, then you're just an addict trying not to use drugs, or you're just an alcoholic who's not drinking, trying not to drink. See, you're always an addict or an alcoholic. Once an addict, always an addict, is what they say. Um, and you're always fighting the next relapse. I'm here to tell you that that Though it may sound true, is actually the wisdom of the world, and it's a lie. Um, and it's killing a lot of folks. Because you can be completely free from that. And it's through the new creation reality, of becoming a new creation in Christ. And it's in 1 Corinthians 5.17. Um, you can read it for yourselves. But basically, if you're in the program, I just want to share these three steps out of the 12 steps that are the most important to your walk is step three, uh, made a decision to turn your will over to God. I'm not gonna read all the steps for the sake of time, but uh, turn your will over to God. Surrender is the most important part, first and foremost. You have to surrender. I can't teach you how to surrender. I've had people over the years ask me, hey Derek, how do I surrender? I wish I knew. I wish I had a step one, two, and three, this is how you surrender to God, but it's a heart issue and I can't teach you that. But you will know when you've surrendered because your life will change. You will literally give it over to the one who wants it so that he can transform it. It's, it's beautiful. Um, that is the first most important. And then we move to step 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. As we understood him, we know that the program says, you know, as we understood him, but we also know that the program was written by a Christian, and we also know that the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is full of scripture. They just took the word Jesus out. The reason they took the word Jesus out is because at the time the church had uh, a taboo on it, and the name of Jesus kind of turned people off. So for the sake of including all and being inclusive, they removed the name Jesus, but they kept principles of truth. Now see, the problem with that is that it's a half-truth. So that means it's a full lie. That's why you only have 40 something percent success rate in Alcoholics Anonymous. Don't quote me, but last I heard that was the uh, percentage or statistic. Um, so it's, you, you saw it through prayer and meditation. That's huge. You have to spend time with the Father. You have to pray. You have to meditate. Um, you have to spend time with Him. See, as you do that, you become more aware of Him. As you become more aware of Him, then you actually, it translates into transforming you to walk out what you were created and destined to be and what you were created to, to walk out while here on this earth. Um, then step 12, and this is one of my favorites of the 12 steps. And it states, having had a spiritual awakening, I'm gonna stop right there, I don't wanna read the rest of the step because it's the most important part. See, it's telling you that as you've worked step one, through 11 now you have had a spiritual awakening you have come to the knowledge of God 
See, and hopefully, my hope is you come to the knowledge of Jesus because God apart from Jesus is just recovery apart from transformation. Don't get me wrong, you can be in recovery and you could be a better person and a, a better um, person in your community and be doing better and not getting in trouble as much. And that's great, but the problem is apart from Jesus, you're not fulfilled. So you're always seeking. And you're seeking in a world that will never fulfill. The only thing that can fulfill is Jesus. Um, I want to move on from that. I do want to say, though, that I know many of addicts, many of alcoholics who have come to knowledge of Jesus, come to knowledge of truth, and it's changed their lives. I also have seen many addicts who have had four, five, six, even 10, 11, 12 years, alcoholics included, um, clean and sober, relapse. Well, why did they relapse? They relapsed because they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. That's my opinion, um, but it's a proven fact. If you see anyone with any decent amount of time or any length of time that has fallen off the wagon or has used again, nine out of ten times it's because they did not have a relationship with Jesus. So the whole point is you have to have that spiritual awakening. Now, I can save you the trouble, you can skip the 12 steps, you can surrender right now, open up your Bible, start reading about Jesus, read who He created you to be, read what God says about you, believe those truths and be completely transformed into a new creation and, and live the life you were destined for. Um, or you can work the 12 steps and hopefully come to that reality you know, over a period of time, whichever you see fit. I personally skipped the 12 steps, I lived them out, however, I surrendered on my knees um, after being in rehab for eight days, I left the rehab because I knew I had changed because Jesus came into me and changed my life and I just knew um, and ever since then I've never used, I've never had a desire to use and all I've had a desire for is to look more like Jesus and my life has completely changed 180 degrees from going towards hell and living in hell to living just this amazingly blessed, beautiful full life um, with a beautiful family, just so many, so many blessings. Um, I want to touch on the situation that I want to share with you. So my brother overdosed a couple years ago. He was 21 years old, um, or right after his 21st birthday, he overdosed from a heroin overdose. And I heard in my spirit, God tell me to raise him. So I went after it to raise him from the dead. And I believe wholeheartedly that God was going to do that. I had seen other miracles, God moving, lots of healings. And it was just, felt this was the next step. And God was going to do this because he told me clearly he was going to do it. Uh, I grabbed a group of friends, brothers in the faith, uh, some core believers. And we fasted and we went after it. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into the whole story. But he did not rise so, what does that mean, Derek? Well, oh wait, how did that affect me? That affected me, it did not challenge my faith in God. It did not ever once make me challenge my belief in God. I, I believed in Him wholeheartedly. I, I knew He's the truth and I, I just, none of that was affected. The only Looking hindsight 2020 back on it, the only effect that it had on my life is I took my foot off the gas pedal. What I mean by that is I was going 100 miles an hour after Jesus. Every moment of every day, every breath that I took was Jesus-centered, Jesus-focused, and I had a burning desire to be more like Jesus. I was chasing after Him with everything that I had. My wife supported it, um, and that's just what we were doing. When my brother passed, I literally just let up a little bit, and in letting up a little bit, um, I don't want to say I regressed because I really didn't. God still healed people through me. Uh, I still have words of knowledge for people. I was still able to prophesy over people and just speak into their hearts, accurate words of knowledge, just amazing things. And what that showed me, and what this has taught me, is that it has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us. If you're surrendered, God will work through you. Period. At the moment, just recently, you know, I, I realized that I let off the gas. Um, the moment I realized that, it, it just put a desire into me to learn from my mistake. There's no shame, guilt, condemnation. 
Uh, never once have I had any of that. It's just like, wow, I need to get back to going after God the way that I was before my brother passed. So that's where I'm at with that. And then I want to move into um, something that's just on my heart. And a lot of people have this false belief that God takes people. And that's just not true. And I have some scripture that I want to share with you guys. And then I want to let Holy Spirit work on your hearts. And I want you to come to the revelation of truth. And I want you to decide for yourselves with the revelation coming from the Father what it is that you believe. And I just want to challenge you if you believe that God takes people. I understand what you're saying. I understand your thought process. But it's the wrong way of thinking because you're not believing truth. And it causes grudges and it causes resentments and it will actually cause you to back off from God if you start to believe that lie. So I wanna just share some scripture with you guys that really helped me in, in my time of need, let's say. Um, you know, when my faith, you could say, was being challenged. You know, I'm staring death in the face and I believe God would raise him and he didn't raise, well, what do I do now? I stand on the word of God. I don't ever let my, circumstance, my circumstances dictate what I believe. I don't let my circumstances dictate truth. And truth is found in the word of God. So I believe this until I see this manifest in my life. I stand on this until this becomes my reality. Um, so just, I want to share some scripture with you guys. First we have John 10.10. 10. So I'm going to turn there. You know, I believe that God receives people. I don't believe God takes people. I don't believe he's up there punching clock, saying, well, it's their time, and then takes them. Um, you'll never get me to believe that about my brother, because he was young, he had destiny, he had purpose to fulfill. Um, and I believe he believed a lie, and it cost him his life, or his time here on earth. Um, but you can't convince me that that was God because I know God had plans to touch people through his life. And I just, I don't see God taking someone before they fulfill that. So John 10.10 10 says, this is Jesus speaking, this is red letters. Uh, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So it's just cut and dry. You got the devil, you got Jesus. He's saying the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's saying, I, Jesus, have come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. So I don't see Jesus taking life because the, then he'd be a hypocrite and he'd be going against what he's saying right here. Um, that's just me. And then I have also Hosea 4.6. I made little tabs to save time. Hosea 4.6 is my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the knowledge, I just want to clarify, is not knowledge of the world, is not being studied in psychology, is not being studied in medicine. That's great, but that's not the knowledge that God is talking about. What God is talking about is the knowledge of truth, the knowledge of Him, the, the knowledge of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the life that we were created to live. And we find that knowledge by reading. And when reading, Holy Spirit illuminating in us the truth and depositing the Word into us so that it can birth Christ, so we can manifest Him. It's just, it's beautiful. So. We're destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need the knowledge of the truth. And then last, I have Ephesians 5.17. Yeah. And I want to read this, and then I just want to read a couple verses um, above it, because I just think it's amazing. Uh, the whole book of Ephesians is amazing, but pertaining to God not taking people and receiving them. 5.17 says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. He's telling us right there, guys, like, don't be a fool. Know the will of God. 
And a lot of people teach that you can't know the will of God, but it's riddled throughout the New Testament. Know the will of God, and all you're getting get understanding. You know, get knowledge of the truth. My people perish. He's he's warning us. You will perish. You will you will hinder your walk. You will not become what you were created to become if you don't gain the knowledge of the truth. If you don't gain the understanding of what I want you to be, of what I say about you, it's just amazing. Um, I'm not going to read above it. I'm going to leave it at that. So, to recap, if you struggle from addiction, I'm here for you. If you struggle, you need help, please leave comments. I will support you the best way I can. Just know that I'm always going to minister truth. Uh, the best way I know how to help somebody out of any situation. I will love you and I will walk with you through it. I will share my experiences with you and hopefully they'll encourage you. Um, maybe open you up, open your eyes to see things a little differently um, but I just pray that you guys open your hearts um, and realize that something needs to change if you're battling that um, if you're in recovery praise God I, I'm thankful for that but I ask that you seek truth for truth I ask that you go after the truth I ask that you don't just do recovery that you actually become fulfilled and transformed um, because that's just a beautiful thing when that happens. I want to thank you guys for your support. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. It's going to be a blast. I want to thank you for joining me fasting. Um, it's going to be amazing. I also want to clarify, because it was asked, when I mentioned fast, I am speaking of a water fast. That's what I will be doing this year. Um, there's a Daniel fast, and there's just the, the water fast that Jesus partook of. And when Jesus mentions it in the New Testament, He's speaking of drinking only water, eating no food. Um, so, hope that helps. That's what we're doing. That's what we're hoping for. At least one day of the weekend, every weekend. Hopefully, it'll spur into, you know, both Saturday and Sunday. And then, hopefully, into some extended fasts once the discipline is is created and, and we're walking in it. Uh, thank you, guys. Love y'all. Till next time.